Hello and welcome back to Engineers Escape. My name is Jake and today we're going to be ordering our components for our drone. Here's a shot of the drone we're going to be building. This is part three of our build a drone series. If you haven't already be sure to check out the other parts. Let's head over to the computer and get started. This spreadsheet is going to be linked in the description below. So be sure to find it there with all these links. But before we get started, I wanted to say, obviously these are the prices right now, um, and they are going to be changing over time, but as of today, we can build this for around $492 for everything. I do have multiple links on the right in case some of the products go out of stock from different sellers of the uh, items end. But you may have to do some shopping around yourself to get the best prices. So lines 1 through 19, that is the drone, we'll go through that first. I have updated link 0 on this, so these should be mostly up to date. And at the same time, I've just opened all the links up here in my browser. So the first thing is the frame, DJI F450 frame, it's just a knockoff of it. The only thing to note is on the bottom of the arms here, these look like they're solid, however, the way I have the landing legs hooked up, that wouldn't work. But you can see here, I think they are actually hollowed out, it's just the picture isn't showing. This frame kit should also come with some Velcro, the screws, and I also believe it had a battery strap. The next item are the motors, propellers, and ESCs. And you can see here there's four of them. This is a really good price for it. Obviously this is a budget build, so we're not going too fancy with these. But these do the trick just fine. Here are the batteries. Uh, we get two batteries. You'll see that they have the Dean's plug. However, we're going to be changing that to an XT60, so that won't be any big deal. Here is the GPS. The important thing is that it is the Neo M8 um, module in there with the GPS and compass. If you get the M7 or the 7M, it just doesn't work well at all, and I highly recommend you do not buy the 7M. This is only a few dollars more. This is the flight controller, and you can see all the different features it has all through here, but it's working quite well for the build, and I highly recommend it. And mine did come with the capacitor and the little soft mounts, the little squishy things. It's the um, Maytek F405 CTR. This is the camera gimbal. It's three axis uh, with a Storm32 gimbal controller. Okay, so for the HD camera, I don't have this camera, but I don't really recommend the one I have. So you might have to do your own research, but I did find this. It seemed like it had fairly good reviews. Uh, this camera, ACT74, but anything with this form factor, like a GoPro Hero 3 or whatever, that'll fit on our gimbal is kind of what you're looking for. This one's about 40 bucks, so you could spend 40 or 50 bucks on one, even if you found your own. It doesn't have to be the exact same one as this. You're going to need a couple of these micro SD cards, um, class 10, so it can record fast enough for your video. So 64 gigabytes for your camera, and then 16 gigabytes for the flight control black box logging. Again, you might be able to find a better deal than this, but I've used Sandisk all the time, and I trust those memory cards. These are the XT60, so these are going to be used for our uh, battery connections that we're going to resolder and we put one on our flight controller and replace the ones on the batteries. This is what I bought at my local home improvement store. It's just a fiberglass rod, uh, but I linked to it anyway. I cut this down into four landing legs, and then I got some of these CPVC caps and hot glued them on the bottom. And they work quite well and have not broken so far even though I've had many, many crashes. Uh, about the landing legs also, they're really good because um, when you put them on the ends of the arms, it's a nice wide stance and uh, it's easier to land. And I tried some other, other landing legs that were supposed to come with a 450 frame or before it and they just sucked. Uh, really flimsy, they broke on the first crash. It's not good at all, so I highly recommend you either make your own out of maybe this side of the if you can't find something like that, you can just use wood. These here go underneath of the motors, and they kind of act 
there's a vibration that's there. Or damper. I'm actually not positive if you need these with the isolation system we have, but it couldn't hurt. This is the first person view camera. Um, things to note about it, it is a CCD sensor, so you won't get any kind of jello from your FPV footage. Um, it has 1.8 millimeter focal length, or I'm sorry, 1.8 millimeter lens. That basically means that the field of view is going to be somewhere around like 180 degrees to maybe 210 degrees. So you, it's easier to land and you can see your, in your peripheral really good. You can get whatever color you want, black, blue, or red. And NTSC basically means that it's going to be in 30, 30 frames per second, whereas PAL will be, I believe, 25 frames per second or 24 frames per second. It doesn't really matter. I think I have the NTSC for mine. This is our video transmitter. This isn't, isn't the exact one I have. I actually have this one, only mine has dip switches on the back instead of the button, button with the little LED. But this one was a better deal than the one I got, so I thought we might as well get this one. This is our PSMA, and it's 200 milliwatts. I did have a 600 milliwatt video transmitter, but since I was new to the hobby, I ended up burning it out because I left it on for too long without flying the drone. So I recommend you also only get 200 milliwatts. I'm not sure I'd be really careful with it. These are the antennas that I have. I have one on the drone and then one on the goggles. They seem to be working quite well. Um, they're 5.8 gigahertz Team Black Sheep Triumph. The style I have is the long ones with the inner hull um, reverse polarity SMA. And that's the kind you're going to need. You need to get two of those. Again, um, for the vibration isolation, we're going to be using 1 16th inch steel rope. Doesn't necessarily need to be galvanized, but that'll help it not rust over time. Uh, I got four feet of this at my local hardware store and we're going to use these to also make the vibration isolators these are used to kind of clamp the wire down and you should only need one of these because it says there's 10 pieces and we'll be using eight of those this was a lot cheaper than the hardware store where i found mine so i recommend you get these online also okay so that was all the drone parts which as of today that is totaling up to 341 dollars now let's look at the peripherals we're going to be using for the rest of the system to make it work. Okay, so for our peripherals, the first thing you're going to need is a set of goggles. Um, so you can see what the drone's saying in real time. These are the ECMD R007 Pros. Uh, so far I really like them. Oh, man, they're a cheap goggle. They get the job done. And we're going to be using one of those TBS Triumph antennas to replace that stock antenna that comes with this. This is another type of antenna. Again, it's RPSMA. This essentially is for long range. It like shoots the beam at a narrower, um, narrower width, so that way you can get longer range. But you have to be aiming this type of antenna right at your drone as you're flying. Next item is a lipo bag. Essentially, whenever you're charging or storing your batteries, you'd want to have them in one of these. That's a fireproof bag in case they would happen to explode. Just an extra safety precaution. And for this one, you'd have to get the bigger bag. Okay, the next thing is the battery charger. This is the IMAX B6. Uh, this will charge our batteries in approximately 90 minutes from dead. Um, if you want them to charge faster than that, pretty much the most that it's recommended is to charge it in an hour, and that's going to be significantly more expensive than this type of charger, as far as I could tell. So I ended up getting this IMAX B6 charger, and that was good enough for me. If you get this, you're also going to have to get the AC um, power plug cord because it doesn't come with one. So here's that. I got a um, plastic storage tub to put all my drone stuff in at the local Walmart for about 10 bucks right now. And this was about the perfect size to fit the drone in with the landing legs and the propellers still on. This is the RC remote control and it also has a receiver in it. It's a Radiolink T8FB. Um, the important thing about this is it comes with the R8EF receiver and I should show some pictures of it. Here's the receiver. You see it has these sets of pins here so that way we can use channel 1 for our flight controller and then channel 5 and 6 to control our gimbal. 
The other thing about this is you want a mode to remote. That means that the throttle stick is on the left. Um, it will sort of um, stay where it is instead of recentering it. However, if you get one that has the opposite stick, I think there is something you can do to flip-flop the sticks. And plus mine also came with a little plastic piece. If you wanted to, you could put it on both sticks so that they'd both recenter automatically. However, the way I fly, I don't do that. And then here's a lanyard um, so that you can hold your uh, remote control from your neck. And these ones are nice here because they also have this little clip here so you can take it off nice and easy. Okay, those were the peripherals. We'll go through the extras just quickly. I'm not going to bring them all up. And I'm not including the extras or the supplies and the cost of the drone. For the extras, these are things that you don't necessarily need. And then for the supplies, I'm assuming that you either have these things already, and even if you didn't, I don't think it's necessarily fair to include them in the cost of the drone, especially if you need a pack of screws and you're only going to be using like four screws out of the package. But these are things you still might need. For the extras, I like these sticky battery straps. It just helps keep the battery in place a little bit better than regular. And I also used one for my camera to help it stay in place instead of the stock camera strap that comes with the gimbal. This is a DVR that plugs into your phone. So basically, you can also you can have the video in your goggles and then you can have the video recording to your phone in real time in case you want to look at it. Uh, it's also nice in case you would happen to lose your drone, you'd have the last coordinates in case you lost the video feed. These are purely aesthetic, um, but I broke so many propellers I got some extra ones. There's some red ones and some white ones. Um, I've had crashes where they'll, they'll break in one crash, and I've had other ones where they survive three crashes. They're definitely cheap, but they get the job done just fine, so why not get those ones? There's some different antennas also. Okay, so these are standoffs. You're going to need some of these for your flight controller. Um, I like the taller ones. Here's a relatively inexpensive set. And then over here, these are the same types of screws, only they're steel. Um, and we're using those for the vibration isolator mounting. Doesn't necessarily have to be these same ones, but these are the ones I'm using. Okay, other than that, we're using some hobbyist tape. Some sticky Velcro, uh, small paint or popsicle stick, like those craft sticks. Um, solder, blue tack, different wire, super glue, heat shrink, electric tape, zip ties, tons of those, especially when you break stuff. Hot glue and mis miscellaneous wire. Okay, then for the tools, I actually did include one thing in the tools cost because I think that you really should spend the money on it. It's going to save you a lot of headaches. That is the flight simulator called Liftoff. And you can hook up your radio that we're using so you can practice with your same radio to this game. So this is Liftoff. Um, pretty much you just want to use this at a bare minimum to practice and learn how to fly in acro mode because even when I had my other toy drones, I had never flown in acro mode and you need to know how to fly in acro mode to be able to turn your quad. Like, if you spend like 10 hours, that's how long it took me to get a decent handle on flying acro mode. Um, it's going to be a lot less frustrating than having to go crash, rebuild, crash, rebuild, crash, rebuild. Um, don't get me wrong, you're still going to crash. You'll have some stupid crashes still, but if you get the first 100 or 1,000 out of the way in a game, it's a lot easier just to hit the reset button. So I think that's a $20 well spent. And plus, it's just a fun game to play sometimes, too. Then other tools we're using real quick, uh, soldering iron, desolder, wick and sucker, uh, drill and drill bits. We're going to use some hex keys, measuring tape, pot glue gun, needle nose pliers, wire strippers, wire cutters, a computer, an Android smartphone, um, if you want to record with that DVR I told you about earlier, and a USB cable and a micro USB cable. So all in all right now we're at $492.30 as of today if you want to buy this stuff. Okay guys, well that's it for today. If you found this video helpful, I'd appreciate it if you left a like, and if you'd like to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe. Also be on the lookout for part four where we're going to be looking at some of drone footage we've captured. Thanks for watching.